What's up guys, I'm Hunter Strasser. I'm a Nashville-based guitar player, and today we're gonna to check out five things that I think are important when buying a new amp. So for the last few months, I had been on the lookout for a new amp to complement some of the things that I already had and to fill some holes that I had in my collection and some needs that I had for the type of work that I was doing. So I'm gonna take you through the five steps that I run through when trying to decide what I'm gonna get as far as an amp goes. First thing is price. Your budget determines what you can get or what you can't get. So before we go any farther, we do have to decide how much we're willing to spend on a piece of equipment. Some things that factor in with price are whether it's a really big company that's mass producing stuff like Fender or Vox at this point who are making some things at different price ranges but they're mass producing so they're able to make way more of them and keep them a little cheaper. Or a really boutique brand like Two Rock where they're making not a lot of amps and they're really expensive and there's like a two year wait list. So there, there's a trade off there. There are some small builders that aren't as well known who are making incredible amps and they're not as expensive as your really popular, really well-known, trendier brands. So if you are willing to look and kind of find something that fits the need that you want, but maybe isn't something that you're seeing a lot of YouTubers talk about or you're seeing a lot of that kind of buzz around, but they could still sound really great and accomplish all the things that you need them to do. Just as a word of warning, I try to be careful of some of the trendier companies with any kind of gear because they may make great stuff, but it's not always the right answer for everybody. There may be companies that have really cool amps that you see some guys using and they sound great. It doesn't actually fit any of the criteria for what you're doing or what you need or that kind of stuff. Be wary of certain trendier things and make sure you're picking the thing that works for you and you're not spending way too much money just to get something that somebody says is cool but isn't what you need. So now that you've got price out of the way and you've decided whatever your number is, we're actually going to start narrowing down our amp selection here. So the first thing to me is, do you want a tube amp or a solid state? There's great options on both. I've used plenty of solid state amps that I like a lot and a lot of tube amps that I like a lot. I usually lean more towards tube amps just for the sounds I like and the type of gigs that I'm doing. I think they sound great and they work, but I've used Roland JC120s, Quilters, some of the Gibson Lab Series stuff. They're cool, they have different use cases and different s genres that they work better or worse for on either side. I think newer solid state amps are sounding great. A lot of times they don't play as nice with heavier gain sounds. So you maybe need to figure out if that's what you're doing, that maybe not what you wanna do. But if you're playing just straight ahead jazz, then you could probably get away with getting a quilter and that would sound great. You're playing really clean and it'll do exactly what you want. There are two different sides of the thing, but there's a lot of price options for both. I feel like as a general rule, you're gonna cap out a lot lower when you look at a solid state versus tube amps. I don't see, I don't know of many $6,000 solid state amps, but there's a lot of stuff that's great out there for both. So that's the next thing you need to consider. The third thing that I like to think about is the physical size of what I'm getting. And in that comes with, especially when we're talking about tube amps, am I looking at a head and cab? Am I looking at a combo? Am I looking at a 110, a 112, 212, 410? For me, I really like the sound of a 112. I think all three of my amps are 112s. A lot of people prefer a 212 or a 410, like a Super or something like that. Also bearing in mind, not just the size of the speaker and everything, but physically, am I gonna be moving this in my car a lot? Am I wanting to break my back by hauling an amp around town? 
or that's one of the reasons I like 112 combos is I can pick it up and carry it into a gig and it's easy. Um, and then even if I have to put something in a road case, it's not an enormous road case, it's just kind of big. The physical size and then the weight of a thing really does matter. I know there's some amps that people love that weigh just an obnoxious amount. Like twins, for example, are great. The 212 weighs 100 pounds. And it's kind of obnoxious to try to load that into gigs five nights a week. So when I had a twin, I didn't have it for super long because it just wasn't worth me going through the physical distress <laughs> to bring it to every gig. Size is a really important factor in narrowing down what kind of amps we want to get. So once we've decided what we're willing to spend, whether we're going tube or solid state direction, and how big of an amp we're actually looking for, um, I think it's really important to start looking at what style of amp we want. And this also plays into what style of music you'll be playing. But there's so many options we can choose from. There's the classic Fender, Vox, Marshall, Realm of Things. I would say those are the big three. Within that, you kind of start to break down to, in the Vox realm, more mattressy things, or getting into orange stuff, or if you want to get real boutique, starting to look at Dumble style amps, because no one can actually afford a Dumble. But within that, deciding what are the sounds that I really like, and what are the sounds that I'm going to use for the work I'm doing, or playing at home, or achieving different sounds the way that I want them to be in that there's really a ton of options at every price level and at every size point. The only one that doesn't have like a cheap option to my knowledge is the Dumbo style amp. But if you want the other ones, there's a ton of boutique options, there's a ton of mass produced options, there's a ton of different things that we can look at. You just have to decide what style you want and that really is personal preference and you can look at the artists you like, the guitar players you like, the sounds that they're getting, the sounds they used on records, the sounds they use live, and try stuff. Go to shops, try different things. Most people have preferences and kind of decide, oh, I like Fender style amps, oh, I like Fox style amps, oh, I like Marshall style, and then go from there. And as they collect more amps, maybe diversify the collection, or maybe don't. Maybe you just like brown face amps and that's all you keep, and that's great. That's the sound you're looking for. So I think deciding what style you're looking for rather than kind of aimlessly going and trying a bunch of amps and hoping something just works for you, I think you'll end up settling for something in a shop rather than really looking for the best of what you need out of an amp. And the last point, I've hinted at this a little bit as we've gone along, is what are we gonna be using the amp for? This is a huge thing that we need to consider when buying anything of. If I'm just gonna be playing in my bedroom, which there's nothing wrong with, I don't need a 200 watt Marshall. That'd be crazy. I'll blow the house up with that. So if I was just you know, playing along with records and enjoying myself in the bedroom, I might just get like a Helix, the Catalyst or something because I can dial in all the sounds I want. If I'm gigging five nights a week and I'm gonna be loading in and out a bunch, but I still really want a high quality sound, maybe I'll get a hand-wired combo amp. And then that's gonna accomplish the things that I want it to do with that use case. If I'm playing stadiums, then I'm gonna go a different route. So deciding how we're gonna be using the amp and in what situation greatly affects what amp we end up going with. If you're in an apartment and can't play loud at all, then maybe you either want something that's solid state that you can plug headphones into, or something with a built-in IR loader. A lot of the Sur stuff has that. I think the Rev stuff has that too. So there's options for anybody that's doing this stuff. If you're doing a lot of recording, and maybe you want to use tube amps, but you want to plug it straight into your console or your interface, then you could get an AUX or a Torpedo Captor X and do that kind of thing. So deciding how we're gonna use the amp I think is one of the most important factors in choosing what amp we get because 
if we just go get something that's cool or shiny looking, then we might not pick the right thing for the situation we're gonna be in. Two more quick addition notes that I'm not really gonna count as full points, but the aesthetic matters. I think you have to like the things you're using if you're gonna use them. Um, I've definitely had gear that worked, but I didn't like looking at it, so I ended up not using it or not taking it to gigs or that kind of thing. And it does matter, and I think you should just pick stuff that you like the way it sounds, but you also like the way it looks, and it's going to inspire you to pick it up or plug into it and play it. The other thing I think that needs to be qualified is modeler type things. They're great. I think they have a great place for a lot of people and a lot of uses if you're willing to learn them. There's some people who aren't willing or have a harder time with technology or things like that, that maybe it's not the right answer for you. Maybe you want an amp you can plug in to, it has three knobs, you turn it on, you play, sounds good. Other people are totally cool with diving into an editor and really getting into all the little nitty gritty details of making a digital modeler sound great. And I don't think it's a right or wrong, I think it's just different and understanding what you want to get out of it at the end of the day. Those are just some of my thoughts on what I think we should all be considering when we're purchasing a new amp or looking at any new gear. If you like this video, like and subscribe. Let me know what kind of amps you use in the comments and what kind of stuff you've been eyeing or anything you want to see a video on. I've got more videos coming down the line, so keep an eye out for that. Thanks again for watching.